He ah. is Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk Live co-host, NBC Football Night in America. Son of Mine, Mike's second book in the uh, Father of Mine series, now available at Amazon for $4.99. Mike, kind enough to join us. Let me, um, let me start with the Dolphins with Tua's situation. Let me ask you about the possibility of can you bring somebody in to replicate the offense uh, if two is not able to play for a little while? You know, it's not going to be easy to do, Dan. That's one of the things that gets overlooked because they make it look so easy. The little subtle flip, the no look this, the misdirection. There was a play last night. It's like, is this some kind of shell game? How did Waddle end up with the ball? I had to spin it back and watch it again. And even then it's like the ball go. So you need somebody who can do that or, or you need to completely overhaul the offense and build it up for someone who has a different skill set. So it's not going to be easy for them to move forward without Tua for however long it's going to be one game, no games, four games, rest of the season, who knows, but it's going to take some work because we saw the drop off last night when Skylar Thompson came in. Yeah, they run a different offense, and this offense was built around Tua, get rid of the ball quickly, not back seven yards where he can take more hits. And then you look at the play that he gets hurt on. Like the last person in the NFL who should be lowering his head is Tua, and I know he's going for the first down. Everybody wants to be a hero. You want to play. You want to be aggressive. You don't want to be treated differently. But now he's down. Now he's out. Can the NFL step in at any point? with all of these concussions with the player? Well, I don't know how directly the league can step in and supersede medical judgment. I could see some winks and nods, some conversations that never happened, some knowing glances from maybe Dr. Alan Sills, the head of the NFL's medical office to doctors. But even then, at the end of the day, what are doctors comfortable doing? We haven't seen many NFL players who are told by doctors you cannot continue. Yeah. We will not put our name at the bottom of this piece of paper authorizing you to play, even though you want to play. I think the closest was Javid Best. Remember him, the running back from Cal, who had a significant cut concussion injury history at the college level, came to the NFL, had a fairly innocuous head hit the ground while he was falling down October of 2011, never played again. And, it, and we never got a clear answer there. But that may have been a case of, sorry, that's it. This is one too many. You're not getting cleared to play again. That's the only way that Tua would be out. And it could set up a fight, Dan. If the NFL says, you're never allowed to play again, he could go find a doctor that says, he's fine. And at what point does the player have the ability to supersede the NFL's judgment that he's had one concussion too many? Um, and once again, we're trying to be sensitive. Obviously, we want Tua to be able to play but this is about the football aspect of this. If Tua can't play anymore, what are the financial implications for the Dolphins and Tua? And this is a critical question, Dan, and I think it glossed o was glossed over last night by folks who were throwing out the idea he should just retire. There's two different questions here. One, is he never cleared to play again, even if he wants to play? Two, is he cleared to play but chooses not to play? If he's never cleared again, he gets, over the next three, four years, $167 million from the Dolphins because that money is guaranteed for injury. So if the door is slammed from a medical standpoint by doctors on his ability to play, he gets every penny of it. If he's cleared, but he says, you know what, I I'm just, I'm done. I know I'm cleared, but I'm retiring. That 167, that's gone massive financial ramifications. So on one hand, it's not the time to talk about money, but on the other hand, it is because this is one of the major variables. You know, he chose to keep going a couple of years ago after two or actually three concussions in the 2022 season without that much money riding on it. Now it's there. Yeah. It's gone. If, you, if you're cleared by doctors to play and you retire, that money is gone. Yeah, I mean, the pressure to clear him or not to clear him, and then what Tua decides to do, I mean, this is a difficult, I mean, this is really, do I want him back out there? Yes, but even then, I wouldn't have signed him up long-term 
talked about it in the moment. I just, you run this risk. And even though they have an offense that's geared towards him getting it out quickly, here he does lowering his head into DeMar Hamlin. I mean, I thought he hit his knee or maybe DeMar Hamlin's helmet. And then I realized, you know, you're just more susceptible to concussions. And I, I, that's, I, I can't imagine what that independent doctor is going to, you know, rule and then what happens after that. And, and let's remember this, Dan. It's independent of the team. The doctor isn't independent of the broader NFL shield. This isn't some doctor that you find who has no connection whatsoever to the National Football League. So at some level, for the same reason that there were pressures subtly or otherwise put to bear on doctors when it wasn't independent, yeah. this concern that you've articulated, what does the league want here? And will there be a way to send that message? We don't want him to be cleared or we do want him to be cleared. Who knows? But this isn't being cynical. It's being realistic. That person's on the NFL's payroll. And that's why they have independent doctors in the first place, because they know the doctors on the team's payroll will be influenced by what the team wants. The doctors on the league's payroll will be influenced by what that doctor believes the league wants. He's Mike Florio, Pro Football Talk Live co-host, NBC Football Night in America. Deshaun Watson's status now, how would you describe sort of where he is, Cleveland Browns are? Well, there's one key question we don't know the answer to. And I think the fact that I can't get the answer gives me the answer. <laughs> and it's very simple. Did Deshaun Watson disclose to the Browns in signing his 2022 contract this claim that was made this week? Because there's language in there under paragraph 42 that exempts anything that was communicated to the Browns in writing by way of claims. If this is a new claim that wasn't disclosed, and if he's suspended, the Browns can void his remaining guarantees and release him. And it's $92 million total for 2025 and 2026. This is their get out of jail free card. And I said Monday before we even knew the lawsuit was coming, you got to wonder if the Browns just wish something would fall from the sky and he'd get suspended and they could tear up those guarantees. And I know plenty of Browns fans are hoping that's what happens. And this is where we have this weird, awkward convergence of real life issues, allegations of sexual assault and football issues where, mm. man, we're really stuck with a bad contract. Is there a way out of it? There's a way these dominoes fall, Dan, that will allow the Browns probably after this season, the way it would work out from a timeline standpoint, if it all falls their way, if this is what they want, they can avoid the $92 million and move on. Okay, but you're a lawyer here. The timing of this, a Monday after a bad performance, it becomes public. I, like, I don't know how long this has been in the works here. And was somebody fed information to then reveal information to then all of a sudden have a groundswell, and now we have a story? The lawsuit alleges there was an effort to settle the case before it was filed. I think there would be a discrepancy between the two camps as to how earnest an effort and real an effort was made to try to settle the case. But, you know, Dan, anybody that understands the potential contractual ramifications realizes, hey, there's a lot of extra settlement value if this is something that would ignite a chain of events that would cost Deshaun Watson $92 million on top of whatever this lawsuit could cost by way of a verdict in court. So there's a lot of leverage here. And even though the case has been filed, the plaintiff has a lot of leverage because, and again, this all feels unseemly, but this is how the legal system works. If Deshaun Watson goes to this individual now through their lawyers and offers a significant amount of money and part of that agreement would include the person saying, I'm not going to cooperate with the NFL. And the NFL has no power to compel cooperation. That possibility of the $92 million going away gets short-circuited before it ever gets started. So you got to ask yourself, and this is a business transaction, set, set aside the facts, set aside the history from a business standpoint. If you can slam the door on losing $92 million, how much are you willing to pay to slam that door as a straight, simple business proposition? So I don't know the number, but there's a number out there that makes it worth it to Deshaun Watson and his lawyers to save the $92 million. 
Before I let you go, I don't know if it's a large enough sample size for you, but we did see the running back come front and center in week one. Even last night, both teams had good running attacks. Uh, passing touchdowns are down. Are you ready to make that uh, declaration that maybe the style of football is changing right in front of us? Not yet, because we're still in this world where teams don't have as much time as they used to in the off season. They don't have as much time as they used to in the preseason and the early weeks of the regular season are kind of an extension of the preseason. One of the points Sims makes, and I think this is valid, watch the teams that use their starters on offense in the preseason and watch the teams that don't. And the teams that do tend to be more prepared. Look at the Chiefs. There wasn't any issue about whether or not they could get the ball up and down the field last Thursday night. So that correlation, are you getting your guys ready? Are you taking full advantage of the preseason reps? And how ready will your passing game be? Otherwise, it's going to take a little while to get the timing down and, and do all the things the NFL wants to see happen. More points, more excitement, more ratings, more money. Uh, we noticed that there's a Michael F. Florio who does fantasy football, and we were kind of surprised. It, like there's Michael B. Jordan and Michael Jordan. Uh, so I, I don't know. Is there a trademark on Mike Florio here? Is there any kind of legal, pen, you know, something pending? I've had people call me and say, hey, congratulations on your son's job at NFL Network. <laughs> it's like, First of all, if you know anything about my relationship with the league, no one related to me by blood or marriage would ever be employed by NFL Network. And secondly, <laughs> that guy should change his name. Just like PFT Commenter, there's only one PFT, although I've allowed PFT Commenter. We have a loose understanding. I, I will not send a cease and desist letter. I have no such understanding with Michael F. Florio, who should go by his middle name, or change his last name. That is my official position on that. See, I thought it was somebody just calling you Michael F. and Florio, which you've that's, been... That's how I'm known at 345 <laughs> Park Avenue. Have you Sources ever... close to me tell me. Have you ever had the commissioner on? Oh, on PFT Live? Yeah, years ago. You oh. know, when they have something they want to push, like their talking points during the lockout, the commissioner is very available. We don't even get that, Mike. Wait till the next lockout. Wait till the next work stoppage. No, then you will. No, no. We're not having him on. No. Well, I mean, look, he is a master at saying something while saying nothing. It's great. Press conferences, tough question, word salad, move on <laughs> to the next question. And I'm not being critical. That's exactly what you need in that job. You need somebody who will stand up there on behalf of the owners because that's one of the reasons they pay him so much money. The owners can go hide behind the curtain. Yep. He stands up there, he takes the arrows, and he he's like Superman deflecting those arrows or whatever superhero. I don't know if there's a superhero that deflects <laughs> arrows. Maybe it's Roger Goodell, NFL commissioner. You have a better chance getting Aaron Rodgers on than I do the commissioner <laughs> I don't on, know about that. on my show. He'd have to take a lot of ayahuasca, Dan, yeah. before he'd come on. <laughs> would you be willing to take ayahuasca if it meant Aaron Rodgers would come on the show? Yes. Sign okay. me up for okay. that. Fair enough. Uh, have a great weekend. Thank you, Mike. Thanks. See you, pal. That's Mike Florio. Mike F. and Florio, Pro Football Talk Live co-host. Son of mine. His second book is available now on Amazon for $4.99. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.